Hi, my name is Daniel Kitts. I'm a producer at The Agenda with Steve Pakin. And uh, this week we've been uh, talking to some different companies that are creating products and services that could potentially disrupt major businesses in our lives, things like the food industry, things like the postal service. And uh, today we are talking with uh, Mike McCauley. He's the co-founder of Bufferbox. It's a Waterloo-based company that was recently acquired by Google. Uh, and it uh, promises to really change the way that uh, we get uh, things delivered to us. Um, Mike, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dan. Um, before we talk about Bufferbox, uh, I have to ask you, it was announced just today that Canada Post is going to be phasing out door-to-door -door delivery of regular mail in urban centers and increasing the cost of stamps by uh, basically a third. Um, as someone from a company that is all about the future of delivery, uh, what's your reaction to all that? Yeah, you know, um, obviously came across the announcement this morning as well, and I think it's just another indicator um, that as we continue um, to get into new technologies that uh, older industries uh, are continuing to have to innovate. And so this is another indication, and I think it's really exciting for us um, being in the um, mail and, and postal delivery industry uh, to see the players who have been in it for a long time starting to realize this um, and knowing that things do need to change. And I think for us, uh, it's really exciting um, because as people look um, more towards how they can buy things online and be able to receive them uh, effectively, easily, uh, and be able to make that shopping experience online better, um, it's really exciting for us and it gives us a new space uh, to, to continue growing out the vision that we're ultimately trying to build. You mentioned that, that you see this as a sign that, that some of the established sort of structures of the delivery system are realizing things need to change. What um, specifically do you think it is about the business model of the postal system, for example, that really needs to change given new realities? I think it can go back to, to the fundamentals uh, of how technology is affecting our lives. And so if you look at um, how people used to write letters to each other um, as a way to communicate when they were... Uh, not in the same city, we're now using technologies like email. And so I think this is just another incarnation um, of that technology um, being introduced. And, and as we see mail volumes start to decline, um, people are using uh, the Internet. And so because the postal service um, was reliant on those uh, letters, they, they now need to look to, to other ways to innovate. And uh, one of the things they're doing is, is figuring out how they can um, make the, their, their money on parcels, which are now um, making up more and more uh, part of their volume. And so they, they've realized that they need to, to make a change. Uh, and so we're, we're figuring out how we can, we can help that movement as well. Fair enough. Now let's talk about Bufferbox. Um, tell me how you came up with the idea of Bufferbox. As I recall, uh, it came out of a, a personal frustration of yours of trying to, to get uh, packages that you'd ordered. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Um, and so we were actually on a, on a work term, and I happened to be working in the U.S., and the U.S. e-commerce uh, market is a little bit uh, bigger than it is here in Canada, uh, although we are catching up. And I think I was taking advantage um, while I was down there buying a lot of products and happened to be working during the day, as most people are. And when those packages uh, were delivered, I was at work. And so they weren't uh, successful, and then they'd go... Um, back to the depot, and that was a little bit of a frustrating experience. And I remember walking home from work one day thinking to myself, geez, I, these UPS and FedEx and all these delivery trucks are spending a lot of time at the apartment complex that I was living at. And I, th I said, I wonder how many of these deliveries are actually successful. And when I thought about it a little bit more, I realized that not only would it be a better user experience um, to be able to pick them up on, on my schedule, it would also be an efficiency gain um, for the whole parcel industry itself. And so that's kind of where the idea started. And then we brought it up as a, our fourth year design project um, group, started talking about it a little bit more along with some other ideas that we were thinking about doing, and ultimately decided that this was a problem that we wanted to solve because we had it, and we wanted to see a solution. And every time we talked to someone, they said, oh my gosh, like, how can I use that? I have that exact problem. And the more and more people we talk to, the more excited we got about it. And I think that's a really important piece of picking a problem that you're going to work on is making sure that you're passionate about it and that you want to see a solution to it. And so every day when we come to work, we're excited about solving this problem uh, that we want the solution for as well.
Right. And to make it clear to everybody at home, you're basically talking about the frustration of coming home and seeing that the the, the, the UPS truck was there and left you a note, and now you're going to have to drive uh, a few miles to uh, pick up something at a different time in a few days when the package finally arrives at the, the depot destination and all that. Yeah, you're exactly right. So at Bufferbox, we allow people to buy products online and have them ship to convenient locations where they have the ability to pick up that package whenever it's convenient for them. And so it's a, it's a kiosk with a bunch of different compartments in it, and we have them at grocery stores, convenience stores, go transit stations, uh, and then as soon as the package is ready for pickup, that user gets an email saying, your package is now ready for pickup, here's your unique code, and then they enter that code uh, at the buffer box uh, whenever it's convenient for them. That compartment that their package is waiting in opens, and they're able to pick it up uh, whenever it's convenient for them. So yeah, the, the alternative um, to that solution is to have it shipped to your home where you may not be, and then they hold it at a facility where you have to go and drive uh, and pick up that package, wait that delay, figure out when you can fit in your schedule to drive there. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of traction uh, with this new way to receive packages. I've talked to people who order a lot of stuff online, and, and the fi they find the buffer box concept very appealing. I'm wondering, though, beyond sort of that growing sector of the population that you know buys from Bed Bath and Beyond or Indigo uh, online, and then gets packages delivered to them at their home. It, do you see a utility to buffer box beyond that sort of e-commerce uh, aspect? Yeah, well, I think um, e-commerce has been the first way that we've looked at this problem um, because I think it's, it's the one that, that comes to mind and it's the one that solves the problem right away. And I think the exciting part about um, this industry is we're, we're just at the start of it. Um, there's such a small percentage of all um, retail sales that are online today and we see that number growing and growing more and more quickly as more and more people buy things online it becomes more convenient, there's more selection, uh, more price competitive, all those advantages of being able to shop online. And so that's why we're really focused on how do we make that experience even better so more and more people can take advantage of it. And I think once you get a physical network of these buffer box locations um, all over the, the country and all over the world, there's a lot that you can do with that infrastructure network. Uh, and so although we're just at the beginning, we think we're tackling a huge problem uh, with the e-commerce market, and we have a, a long way to grow um, in, in solving that problem. But beyond that, I think there's there's so many more applications that will come of it from that uh, physical network uh, that we're building. Right. Well, I, the reason why I ask is that, uh, you know, I'm wondering, especially in light of today's announcement by Canada Post, um, in this future where the traditional post service is less and less used and arguably less and less sustainable, you know, what's going to happen to, like, the Christmas cards or the wedding invitations? You pointed out that, you know, increasingly we order things online and receive packages online, and we often use email rather than physical letters to communicate. But, you know, there's still a, a part of our society and our culture that, you know, wants those, like, those little envelope uh, messages uh, physically sent through mail. If So as a result of what, what I'm getting at is, Obviously, you're, you're focused on buffer box mostly, but you know when you and your colleagues talk a little bit about where the industry is going and where buffer box fits into it, uh, like do you see there always being a government-run postal service of some kind? Do you see people getting their letters through services like buffer box or other private delivery systems, or do you see traditional letters and cards basically becoming extinct and and us communicating exclusively through online e-cards and such? Um, I, I think there, just like most industries, there, there will continue to be a need for a, a range of solutions. Um, and so Bufferbox right now is, is directly um, related to packages. And I think um, that can expand into other types of mail. And we see that perhaps buffer boxes could become the central hub of where you interact with your physical um, products that you buy online, where you send mail, where you receive mail. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of capability um, as things continue to change and the mail industry continues to, to develop. Um, but the, the packages is the one problem that people see right now and they see a lot of advantages in using it and so that's where we're seeing the traction. But I think there, there will continue to be a range of solutions uh, and we've seen Canada Post 
um, look at other solutions as well, like a community mailbox. Um, but I think everyone will continue um, to iterate and change and uh, develop as the technology uh, continues to push, push things at, to their boundary. Now, you were recently acquired by Google, and, and as I understand it, I take it one reason you were bought by Google is that it and Amazon kind of see themselves as key competitors in the delivery industry of the future. And um, full disclosure, my brother actually works in Seattle for Amazon as a software developer, not involved in, in really the delivery aspect, but he does work there. And Amazon recently announced that they are working on a fleet of drones that would fly packages to your doorstep from their warehouses in under 30 minutes. Uh, I'm wondering, as somebody in the delivery industry trying to think of new ways of delivering things, what's your reaction to that idea, which is obviously very, very embryonic in its, in its, in, in, in its development? Yeah, it's definitely been, uh, been the talk of the town these days. Um, honestly, I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal um, that we're having people think and, and put time into developing new logistics strategies. Um, and again, I think uh, I touched on it last time, that there will continue to be a need for a range of different solutions. Uh, there will continue to be people who just aren't home during the day and need a place to be able to receive packages, and Bufferbox allows them to do that. Um, so I, I think that um, although everyone's talking about drones right now, um, I do I look forward to the day when they can deliver packages. Um, but I think the, the focus for us is how do we make that user experience the best it can be in shopping online? Um, and right now we're able to provide um, that ability for those users who can't receive things at their house to still buy online and still take advantage of that convenience um, and make it easier and cheaper and better um, to buy online. And as new and, and innovative things come out, um, that buying experience will, will continue to get better and better. Uh, so it's nothing but an exciting future, that's for sure. Certainly. I, I mean, obviously the Amazon, as I said, uh, idea is, is pretty preliminary and it'll be interesting to see if it actually you know, can work. I'm curious though if you know you see the potential emergence of delivery drones as a threat to your business model since it seems to take away the need for a physical place to deposit uh, packages. Um, I, I, we, don't, we don't see, again, like I mean we're, we're very excited um, about what drones will mean for logistics industry, e-commerce, all those things. Um, but we, we don't see it as a threat. We see it as continuing to push that boundary and and make logistics and e-commerce e even better. Um, and I, and I, I think I go back to that point of people will continue to not be at home during the day, um, and so they will continue to need uh, a place to be able to ship packages and to, to be able to take advantage of that convenience of, you know what, I'm going to be going through this train station at this time. It'd be great if it can be waiting there for me uh, when I'm ready, or maybe I want to ship it uh, close to work and I want to walk by uh, the convenience store around the corner to pick it up uh, whenever it's convenient. I don't know because they may be placing the order on a particular day and then it gets delivered the next day or some day later. They may not know at the time of ordering uh, what will be the most convenient way to, re to receive it and being able to say it'll be waiting there for me so whatever I'm doing that day I know that I can just fit in at some point and I'll stop by uh, and grab it when I'm walking past. Uh, we think that that will continue to be um, a user experience that people will want. Fair enough. Well, um, there's actually a buffer box at a 7-Eleven just uh, down the corner from uh, where TVO is, so uh, you're a company that we will uh, definitely be following with interest, especially since you're an Ontario-based company. Uh, so uh, Mike McCauley, uh, co-founder of uh, Waterloo-based Buffer Box, and uh, Matt Damon Lookalike, mm -hmm. thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Dan.